Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. In this week's video we're going to be drawing a meerkat together. Now this is a photo that you get with the newsletter this month so if you haven't subscribed to the newsletter already you can still do so because we are sending out the newsletter tomorrow. So if you subscribe today you will get this picture of this meerkat with in your email box tomorrow somewhere around the evening i suppose anyway on to the tutorial by now you've seen me create the background which is a very out of focus soft blurry background so there isn't much to it just add some soft pastel sticks and then blend it out it doesn't look like much but with the meerkat on top of it when the meerkat is finished you will see that it creates the focal attention to the meerkat which is what we are going for here with the blurry background I am using the soft pastel sticks for the meerkat as well. This time I am not using my pan pastels. I just use three or four, maybe five different colors and I add them in where I see them fit. I do add in the under layer darker than the colors I want my end result to be. That way when I go on top with pencils, they will show up and I don't have to do much effort for it. So I just blend this out again with the soft tool by Pan Pastel. This is the only tool from Pan Pastel I'm using in this one because it's so easy to blend with it. And I don't have to get my hands dirty, which is nice also. Now after the underlayer is done, it's time to get in with the pencils to add the details, which is, as you all know, my favorite part. Now a meerkat apparently has a lot of those wispy hairs or fur, whatever, that just stand out. So. That's nice to add in with a darker pencil so it still shows up on the background and it gets a lot of attention because that's what we want with this since they really stand out on the photo as well as you will see tomorrow. Then I just use that dark grey pencil, it's not black, but a dark grey to add in all of the hairs, the short hairs that you can see between the lighter fur, which is coming on next. But first we add in the darker hair so we can work from dark to light as we always do with pastel pencils which is a very nice feature of pastel by the way and you all know that I love it because of that. Now we're going in with a light grey pencil, we are not using white and this one almost entirely no white, just at the very very end to add in some final details but even then it's just in the eyes as I, rem as I remember. As the fur around the left eye is almost completely finished by now, I'm adding in the eye itself which consists of very much black and just a little highlight for the highlight in the eye and a little bit of highlight on the lower eyelid so that it catches some light so you can still see where the eye starts and ends so that it doesn't look like a whole eyeball right in there in the middle of that black. And then after that I'm going in for the nose which is very small so I didn't add that in with the soft pastel sticks and I'm just using pencils for that. He does have some kind of sand I guess that is wrapped around the nose because maybe he was sniffing the sand or the dirt I don't know but it's really cute so I really wanted to add that in which is just a bit a light brown pencil for some details and you don't have to make it very smooth because it's sand so it's a little well not smooth let's call it just not smooth after that it's time to get in the right side of his face and when the fur is almost ready, as we did with the left part, we just add the dark grey first, then the lighter grey on top and the very light grey, the lightest grey, that is at the very end so that it catches the very light hairs which catch the sun. Now this is before we use the very highlights, th those come only at the end. And when the fur around the eye is kind of ready, we add in the eye as well, which consists again of very dark black from the Krita color, which is my favorite one, as you all know. And then we add in the highlight in the eye and a little blue and purple to catch some reflection and the white on top for the very lightest reflection in the eye. And then the eye is done as well. Now, as we move on further down to this piece, I might come back on the upside again for some details when I add the lower part of the face and the chest and everything like that, I can see my values better and judge them better so that I can add some contrast to the face so that it all goes together cohesively. It doesn't look like the face is too bright compared to the body or the other way around. 
So we first add in the little chin, which is really, really cute and small, so it doesn't have to be a lot of attention there. Just the hairs that catch some, catch some light from the reflected light that is bounced onto the rock, I guess, that he's standing on. And then the fur around that and underneath that is a little bit darker because it doesn't catch some light. Only the right part catches a little light, which you can see with the fur that is added there. It's a little lighter than on the left side. I'm basically just using two or three, maybe four colors for the lighter fur, which is a dark gray to add in the first layer of fur, which is the, the one that you can see through. And that's a little bit in the shadow because of the fur on top. Then a lighter grey, which is the one that I'm using right now. And a very light grey on top of that to indicate the hairs that are catching some light, which are the, well, not the actual highlights at the very end, but still the highlights on that part. And for the brown fur, well, the fur that is on top of his back and everything like that, it's just very simple. I added the underlayer in with a very dark brown, so I don't have to add in some more darker browns in between. I just go on top with a lighter brown, which is actually the same grayish color that I used for, for the mid-tone gray in the lighter fur. And then I go on top of that at the very end with a very ivory, the Stabilo ivory color that you see laying on the right side now. This will be the one that we add the highlights with. And that's about it for this one. You don't have to put it all in the same direction or the same length because this fur is really coarse, I guess is the name for it. And it doesn't have a cohesive uh, direction or anything like that. It's just very coarse and it goes everywhere. So the only thing that you have to be careful for is the highlight for the arm that you see right there, which I'm going to add in in a few seconds right now. That's the one that you can see the distinction of when the arm starts, so it catches more light. And if you add that in, all the rest is just the same thing. You just add in the grey for the fur, and then you go on top with the lighter ivory color to add in some highlights, which is mainly on the right side, since the sun is shining from the right side, as you can see in his face. Now I do have to say that I really, really love this one, since it's a very close-up of a meerkat, which I have never done as far as I remember. And I really liked it because it has such an interesting fur. I thought I would use a lot of browns and stuff like that because they look brown, but actually it's a lot, a lot of grey, which is just by using the color picker that I could see that. So I hope you do the same thing if you don't know how to use the color picker tool. I have a video on that to explain how to use it and why it's so important. So. Click in the link in the description if you haven't seen that one already. And of course, subscribe to my newsletter to get this picture tomorrow, which you can find the link for in the description as well. I hope you like this one and I hope to see you again next Friday for the next tutorial that is coming your way. And in the meantime, have a great week.